Hi, my name is Hui Ming Zhao, and I'm professor of chemical and biomedical engineering at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Today, I would like to introduce an exciting technology recently developed in my lab. It is called Bioautomata, which is an AI-driven biofoundry for biosystem design. Modern biotechnology has made a huge impact to society in the past 50 years. Its most important scientific discovery was made in the early 1950s, which is the discovery of double-stranded DNA helical structure. Its most important technology was developed in the early 1970s, which is the recombinant DNA technology. The biotech industry has been growing very rapidly since the early 1980s. However, compared to the microelectronic industry that has a similar development timeline, the growth rate of the biotech industry is much slower, which I think is mainly because the design of biological systems is very slow and expensive due to the complexity of biological systems. Inspired by the microelectronics industry in which foundry plays a critical role in the design and the manufacturing of electronic circuits, many researchers, including me, attempted to develop biofoundries to accelerate the design, build, test, learn cycle in the design of biological systems in recent years. Our biofoundry, named Illinois Biofoundry for Advanced Biomanufacturing, or iBiofab in short, is an integrated robotic system consisting of more than 20 instruments designed for biosystem design. In essence, a robotic arm with six degrees of freedom replaces a human researcher to transfer the samples from one instrument to another for manipulations. To make the biofoundry as versatile as possible, we break down the complex workflows for various biosystem design applications, such as protein engineering and metabolic engineering, into process modules, which in turn are broken down into unit operations. These unit operations are universal and can be programmed to create custom-designed workflows. We built our first generation iBiofab in early 2014. To a large degree, I think the development of biofoundries is similar to the development of computers. In fact, a group of faculty from our university designed and built one of the first computers in the world called Illinois Automatic Computer One or Illiniac one in the early 1950s, which was one of the most powerful computers at that time. However, as you can see in the photo, this computer was very bulky and heavy. Only after several decades of research and development and several major iterations, a supercomputer called Blue Waters was built on our campus a few years ago. I think iBiofab will 
also likely need several decades of research and development before it can be used for engineering any organisms for any applications. Having said that, we certainly don't need to wait for so many years before we can use our biofoundry for some relatively simple applications. In the past few years, we developed a fully automated workflow for design and construction of talents, which is a powerful tool for genome editing. This workflow can be completed within 24 hours with the throughput of nearly 400 talents, which significantly reduce the cost for talent synthesis. As a demonstration of the utility of this automated talent synthesis platform, we designed and engineered a number of talents that showed increased sequence specificity toward a gene involved in a mitochondrial disease. These talents were used to cure that mitochondrial disease in a mouse model by our collaborator from Salk Institute. In another example, we developed a fully automated workflow for pathway engineering. We collaborated with ADM to build a library of more than a thousand pathway variants involved in the synthesis of a commercially important amino acid with a goal to further improve its production. This workflow is similar to the one used for talent synthesis. Similarly, we also collaborated with Kagyo on a pathway engineering project. More recently, we developed a fully automated workflow for metabolic engineering of Baker's yeast. We used the RNA interference technology to perturb gene expression on a genome scale and identify the strains with the improved tolerance to acetic acid, which is a major inhibitor in lignans cellulosic hydroxid used for biofuels production. This workflow includes construction of the RNA interference library, DNA transformation, library screening, and cell cultivation, which takes about two weeks to complete one round of metabolic engineering. In total, we did three rounds, and we were able to obtain mutant strains with the highest reported acetic acid tolerance. In these three representative uh, examples, the biofoundry acts as a doer rather than a thinker, which means that a researcher still needs to design and plan the experiments based on the data obtained. Therefore, recently we decided to install a brain in the biofoundry by applying artificial intelligence and machine learning, which led to the development of bioautomata, an AI-driven or self-driving biofoundry. As a proof of concept, we attempted to use a bioautomata to improve the efficiency of the three gene pathway involved in the synthesis of lycopene which is a food colorant. For each pathway gene, we use the 24 promoters with varying strengths. So the total number of combinations will be 13,824 possible pathway variants. To characterize, to construct and characterize these uh, pathway variants, we developed a, a fully automated workflow as I shown here. In the first round, we randomly selected 46 variants from the library 
and analyze the lycopene production levels. The results were analyzed by a machine learning algorithm to identify promoter combinations that likely increase lycopene thinnesses. In the second round, we construct the library biased towards these promoter combinations and selected another 46 variants for analysis, which led to the identification of new variants with further improved lycopene production. The results were analyzed again by the machine learning algorithm. This cycle pathway optimization can be repeated until the goal is achieved. In this project, we only did three runs, and we were able to identify a pathway variant that showed a higher lycopene production than the best pathway variants identified by random screening. Of course, I have to admit that this is a relatively simple example. However, in the DOE Bioenergy Research Center that I am currently involved, my collaborators and I have been trying to develop new capabilities for the design, build, test, the learn cycle used in the bioautomata and apply them to engineer a number of uh, organisms for things uh, of various value-added products, such as uh, organic acids, lipid-based chemicals, and uh, alcohols. More importantly, in the new NSF AI Research Institute for Molecular Synthesis and Discovery, my collaborators and I are developing new AI and machine learning algorithms for synthesis planning, enzyme engineering, and pathway engineering, which will make a bioautomata smarter and smarter. Also, I would like to point out that I'm not alone in developing biofoundries. In 2019, six institu 16 institutions from the public sector around the world formed a global biofoundry alliance, and currently there are 29 members, and the list continues to grow. In the private sector, Many companies have also been developing biofoundries, and two notable leaders are Zymogen and Ginkgo Bioworks. Finally, I would like to thank my students and postdocs who helped develop the iBioFab and funding supports from DOE, NSF, and DARPA. As I mentioned before, we are still in the beginning of a long journey, but I hope it will be as exciting as the journey for computer or foundry development in the microelectronics industry.